there's the ceiling. Okay, so this is my pattern raptor. It's going to sit up there, something like this, and it will have a radius to it. I brought this over inch and a half so that I could set it on top of 2x4, and that will allow for crown molding around the ceiling. Nail this to the top so I can come through and very quickly mark all the patterns out. Okay, so what I've got set up here is I have a table with a sheet of 7 8 Advantech that we had left over. I snapped a center line. I took a piece of scrap and snapped a center line. I'm going to end up taking those rafters and screwing them down basically like a jig. I'll set one, make sure that it's correct, and then I'll scab block so that every other one is exactly the same. But what I need to do is cut a trammel arm. So here's how I'm going to do that. This is pick an arbitrary number say two inches and I want to make sure that the center of the blade is lined up with the center of the trammel so what I'm gonna do is just plunge cut with the table set right to the edge of the line I'll just move it forward till this lines up doesn't have to be perfect that's close enough now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark this Okay, so here's how you figure out your radius. So I made my rafters 36 inches along the diagonal, and that, I think that'll become apparent later. So 36 inches is the run. I'm gonna go seven inch high at the middle. Hit convert arc. 26 and 5 eighths is my radius. I have 36 inches at the halfway point. What I want is for the rafter to be seven inches tall, and then basically arc through. Okay, so the way this is gonna work is the saw is gonna fit in like this. My radius was 29, 26 and 5 eighths. So I'm gonna pull about 40 inches off, and then I'm gonna trim off all the excess material that I don't need. I'm gonna be cutting this direction with the trammel arm. So about 40 inches, I'll go there. I'm gonna say inch and three quarters, inch and three quarters. What did I go, two inches? We'll just make it look pretty. in just like that and essentially I'm gonna pin everything down so that all I have to do is every one of them I just walk and make the radius basically what the blade does is it kind of bends they make a left and a right curve on those hips is an ellipse but I don't want to get fancy with major and minor axis and a trammel arm and all of that so this method is called lofting. Okay, so in order for me to cut this radius, I'm gonna use the Arcus blade. Not sure how many of you guys have seen this. It's been on our old skill with a cord. It's the last time we used it, which might be well over 10 years. Basically what the blade does is it kind of bends they make a left and a right. So since we use blade left saws, I use the left. Lock out, tag out, take out your back. I'm gonna install this guy and that's gonna allow me to cut the radius. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do is basically just build a template, just a little loose, put some blocks on there that I can drop these in every time. Okay, so I'm loosely lined up on that, but I'll be able to take care of that with the tram arm. Again, I'm not gonna make it super tight or they'll be hard to get out. I think that should be pretty good there. Double check everything twice. 36 inch run, seven inch rise for the arc, convert arc, 26 and 5 eighths. 26, 10. Yep. So I'm going to pull from the top of this roughly 26 again. So I'm going to go 26 and 5 eighths. 26 and 5 eighths. Wherever those cross. 26, 10. And that should line up with this guy. Oh, a little bit off, so I'm going to cheat it just a little bit. I don't care so much about the top. So basically I'm shooting for right here. Here's the top of my arc coming down to here and coming down to there. So basically what I want to do is set the saw blade right on that mark, but inside the trammel. Then I'm gonna check it between these two and adjust if I need. Again, this isn't rocket science, it's gonna get drywall. Okay, so I'm gonna say right about there. Which now if I line up my tape, come right along the center line, 26 and 5 eighths. Okay, so now it's sticking out. Now I can line it up with where I was at before. Lightly tack it. Now I can come back here and check. Okay, and it might be hard for you to see. That lines up perfect there. I can come back over here. And you can see that. Come around holding it. I can't see that. Anyway, it basically lines up perfectly there. So now, the trammel, I'm just gonna do this repetitively for all 24 of those. And I'll probably cut one extra just in case something breaks. With this arc display, after looking at the website, you're supposed to tilt the saw five to 10 degrees. That means that the inside corners, the curves are gonna be ellipses and ellipse. I don't wanna get fancy with a jig, so here's how you lay this out without anything special. If I divide my curve 
into even numbers. So there's the curve. I have all my rafters cut, all the curves are cut. Now I have to cut all the inside corners, which are ellipses, but first I gotta cut them like they're hips and valleys. The very first thing I do is I always just double, triple, every single time I do this, I pull out my calculator. I know my rafter was a 36 inch diagonal and a six inch pitch. I hit 48, five sixteenths. I just double check it. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark six on the hip valve scale, since these are hip valve, so that I don't have to flip over this board. I just grab a scrap that's the same thickness. That's two by 12, so I'm using uh, two by, I want this to be exactly inch and a half parallel. What this allows me to do is not have to flip over the board when I'm cutting. That's not a big deal here, but if you were cutting a big LVL or big beam, hip valve, it would matter. Okay, so that first one, I cut to the long. I'm gonna cut this one to the short. We'll automatically center up my double cheek cut. Okay, so my number was 48 and 5 sixteenths. That's along the center. So 48 and 5 sixteenths. I'm gonna go ahead and scribe this across. Along that mark, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a six on the hip bow. I'm gonna draw a plum cut. Now because I have a C cut on my rafters there, I have to add to this. So I'm gonna put a C for center. I have to go parallel two and an eighth. It'll become apparent why once, once the ceiling's all framed. So six on the hip bow, mark this. I mark a C, because I know that those are both centers. Now to do the same thing, since that's the center, I need a plum cut here and a plum cut here. Three quarters is half of my thickness, half my thickness. Now by lining that up, I'm parallel. I'm gonna mark both sides. This line gets cut first, that gets second, giving me a center cheek cut. Now I have to just square this off because I've got a seat cut. You would have seen that in the other video on the rafters themselves. Okay. It comes in flat, it angles like a mansard roof and flattens off. So I cut all my rafters 36 inches, then I put the arc into them. This is the cutoff from that. When I get to the inside corners, those become hips. The curve on those hips is an ellipse. But I don't want to get fancy with major and minor axis and a trammel arm and all of that. So this method is called lofting. It's what boat builders can do. Basically, you lay out a grid and you transfer those arcs. So my, my uh, rafter has 36 inches across here and it is seven inches tall in the middle. All I had to do was go 36 inch run, seven inch rise, hit convert arc. So 26 and 5 eighths. If I pull from the top here, 26 and 5 eighths, it's gonna be the same here and the same here. Now, to get my curve, I can just divide that 36 inches in even numbers, divide by 12 and I have three inches. All I have to do now is measure up, take this number at each of those, divide my hip by 12, custom mark out those numbers, and then just simply transfer the heights. I'm gonna do that all with a calculator. This was just to illustrate it. So first of all, I had 48 and 5 sixteenths. I'm gonna divide that by 12. That gives me four. That's a round number. So I'm gonna just line it up 
with the center mark of my cheat cut. And then I'm gonna mark all of these out. But I'm gonna have the calculator keep track of rounding because I know that there's gonna be rounding in there. There has to be with that 5 16ths. So I'm gonna store that. My first one is at four. I'm gonna add recall memory. Oops. Okay, let's do this again. Yeah, start all over. Clear that out. 48 and 5 sixteenths divided by 12. Store that. My first one is at 4. I'm going to add recall M plus. My second one is at 8 and 1 16th. 12 and 1 16th. 16 and an eighth. You can see that we're rolling just a little bit. Is that rounding? 20 and an eighth. 24 and an eighth. 28 and 3 16 32, 3. 36, 4, etc. The calculator is keeping track of all that rounding. 44 and 5 16 just for giggles, we should be right around four. Yep, about four, 16, four and eight. Depends on your thickness of pencil. All right, I'm gonna mark all of these. Once this one's cut, then I can use it as a pattern for all the others. And this is much, much faster than setting up a tremolo. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So there's number six. I know I'm gonna be seven inches tall at that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark it. Okay, so here's how the calculator can generate those. Get rid of the memory. So the first thing you need to do is check. The calculator will go from some imaginary point down, so you can lay the curve out this way. We want to go from the cord up. So the way I do that is I hit convert store, which gets me to my preferences. I just keep hitting store till I get to this thing here. I want it to say inside, so I'm going to hit the minus key and hit equal. The other thing is, is because my uh, layout was three inches apart, is I need to store that as my stud centers. So three inch, uh, what is it? Three inch store five. Now that's stored. Okay. So now I go back to my original arc, which was 36 inch cord, and then a height of seven in the middle. I hit convert arc, and I'm just gonna keep going through here until I get to that a1. So 6 and 13 I want to write down. These work from the center out. 6 and 5. 5 and 7. 4 and 2. 2 and 6. And 0. Okay, I should have known that. So starting from the center out, that means that each of these of these numbers corresponds to this height. Calculator tells it tells me that. So I have six and thirteen. Get a mark there. Six and five. Five and seven. Four and two. I can't read my writing. Three and eight. Check that. No, that's two and six. Two and six. So that should have been two and six. Now I just connect the dots. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark them on this side. It's the same thing. Six and thirteen. Six and five. Five and seven. Four and two. And the last one is two and six. All I'm gonna do is connect all of the dots. Okay, and I'm going to plane that through to the center out there. Okay, so the next thing I'll do is I'll make sure the battery's charged, and then I've got the Arcus blade. I'll just set the depth, and that should make the cut just fine. Where were you? February 30th, 2020. Your mom's house. You're lying! Of course I'm lying. I wouldn't be caught dead over there. Boom, February 30th does not exist. February, ah.
Okay. So there's the curve. Now I'll just use mark. I'll use this guy to mark out the others, and then when I go to actually finish it and skin it, get it ready for the drywallers, everything's going to play into the center. So a little discrepancies, they'll just float out with the taping mud. So after all the layout, all the cutting, the math, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, now it's time to start framing the ceiling. Now you can see why I skinned the inside of that tray with a two x four. And even though those rafters don't plane out perfectly, it's okay, the drywall is gonna float that. With all this cutting, I never get it exactly on the money, and that's okay. I definitely didn't want it to project into the room. So projecting a little in on that two x four is not a big deal. When you go to install these hips, don't panic if at first those cuts don't look perfect. It just takes a little bit of tweaking, trust the math. You did a good job cutting, it's gonna fit well. This edge to be good, I want this edge to be good. And you can see that's open, but I'll take care of that in a second. Also, do not shoot your fingers. This gun's pretty slick, you can actually shoot a little closer to your fingers, you just have to walk for the nails themselves, but it won't bounce fire or double fire. Uh, there's a, the way that that trigger's set up is when you shoot once, you pull the trigger first, only allow you to shoot one nail. So even if you bounced over and hit your hand, it would not drive another nail. So there's the ceiling. I always like to install all of the rafters first and then fill in the ceiling. Again, trust the math. Goes pretty quick. Looks pretty cool. And because of the roof, I'm gonna have to rip that guy. Same thing here because of these rafters. I also always cut a few extra rafters because once you've taken this much out of two by 12, if it's cracked or it falls off like it did there off the ladder, then you've got a backup that breaks. So that's how the ceiling looks before it gets skinned. Uh, we put it this way for the drywallers. Okay, so what we did is we picked one of the ribs, drew a line on it. That was our reference to measure both ways. Kyle's got a line drawn here. And then Shane and I just read off measurements. Then all he had to do is connect the dots. You probably see this side a little bit better. You know the irony is, both of these guys have horrible gingivitis because they don't actually floss. So we do the one by four like a barrel because it's a little easier to lay out and install. And one by four is three quarters of an inch thick. So it gives a ton of backing for the drywallers. You can see the way that we did our layout. Those cuts are pretty decent, but again, this is rough framing. So that hits the taper's job to make it look perfect. As framers, we're just installing backing and making it pretty good. The flat spot up there, as you can see there, we went ahead and sheeted it with the two bottom pieces of Advantech we had left over from the floor. They're always a little gnarly and that provided a ton of backing for these guys. So these drywallers decided instead of double layer or quarter inch, they used half inch rock and they wetted one side. So if you wet the side that goes against the framing, it makes it easier to bend that arch. And then they just put a lot of screws into it. Now it's up to the taper to do a good job making it finish out well. This is just that sag resistant half inch rock. That's what they use on the lid everywhere. And here's the finished ceiling. Staged, house is on the market, ready to sell. Yes, just a little bit of drama to that ceiling. Since we hand cut our roofs, we always have the extra attic space. So all told, this took me about a day to frame. If I wasn't recording it for YouTube, probably half a day. Hope you enjoyed parts one through four. Please like and subscribe.